Distinguished future physicians, welcome to Stomp on Step 1, the only free video series that helps you study more efficiently by focusing on the highest yield material. Today we're going to be covering the basics of metastasis and cancer nomenclature. Hey everyone, I'm Amy Joy, I'm Brian McDaniel's fiance, and I will be conducting this video today. Um, this is the sixth video in the series of the cell injury and cancer videos. If you find this video interesting, then you can check out the others as well. First, we're going to start with tumor nomenclature. The names for most cancers follow a specific naming system that helps you know what they were talking about. First, we'll start with mesenchymal tissue. This includes connective tissue, blood, or lymphatics, and these follow a specific naming system. There's a prefix for different types of tissue that make up the tumor and a suffix to signify whether it is benign or malignant. The prefix plus oma means it's benign. The prefix plus sarcoma means that it is malignant. There are some cancers that do not follow the rules and these include leukemias, cancer of blood cells, and lymph nodes, lymphomas. These are both always malignant so they do not follow this, the same pattern. Here are a few examples of the mesenchymal cancer prefixes. For example, lipo indicates fat, kind of like liposuction is an easy way to think of it. Osteo means bone. Five means some kind of fibrous tissue. Chondro means cartilage. Hemangio indicates blood vessels. Think of it as heme, heme and blood. Lyomyo means smooth muscle. And rhabdomyo means striated muscle. Epithelium involves glands and linings of surfaces or cavities, and it has a little more complicated naming system. Benign epithelial cancers that contain glandular tissue, such as prostate, adrenal glands, and certain types of colon cancers are called adenomas. Adenomas often grow into the lumen of whatever organ they are in forming a polyp. Cyst adenomas are hollow cyst-like cancers that are usually filled with fluid. Benign cancers of stratified squamous epithelium that form cauliflower finger-like projections are called papillomas. And finally, malignant epithelial cancers, the ones that you do not want to get, are called carcinomas. Now let's talk about metastasis. This is generally thought of as being separate from cancer invasion, which is the direct extension of a cancer across an organ or to neighboring organs. Invasion is a tumor growing in size and taking up more space, while metastasis involves migration to a completely new site in the body. This is the most important factor for determining a cancer's stage, and the stage is the most important clinically prognostic factor for how your patient is going to do. Cancers take two main highways in the body to spread, either lymph the lymphatics or the bloodstream. Carcinomas tend to spread via the lymphatics, while sarcomas more commonly spread via the blood. To be able to spread, cancer cells need certain abilities which are gained via additional mutations. This is why it takes decades for malignant cancers to form. They need tons of genetic and epigenetic changes, including the ability to break away from their primary tumor, eat through the basement membrane, which they do via type 4 collagenase, to eat through the extracellular matrix surrounding it, they do this with metalloproteinases, enter the lymphatics and bloodstream, survive travel in the fluid, exit the blood and lymphatic system, and the ability to survive in the new site. The original tumor mass is called the primary tumor, and all subsequent masses are secondary tumors. Cancers can spread almost anywhere once they are in the lymph or blood, but the location of secondary tumor sites is not random. The circulatory anatomy and how accommodating certain tissues are to cancers mean that secondary tumors tend to choose more places than others. Due to these tendencies, most likely location of metastasis can often be predicted. Liver metastasis is most common among cancers that arise in the GI tract, like colon cancer, which makes sense as the liver receives blood from the GI tract through the portal venous system. Brain metastasis usually presents at the gray-white matter junction. This is because the width of the vessels changes quickly at this junction, and the metastatic emboli are more likely to lodge there. Metastatic brain cancer generally presents as multiple lesions, while a primary brain cancer is usually a single lesion. Lung and breast cancer tend to migrate to the brain at the gray-white junction, as we just discussed. Prostate cancer, lung cancer, and breast tend to locate to the bone and the spine, and breast cancer tends to prefer the lungs. Different primary tumors have unique secondary bone cancer characteristics. 
lytic lesions are where increased osteoclast activity eats away at the bone and releases calcium, seen as hypercalcemia. Blastic lesions are where increased osteoblastic activity results in more bone being laid down than normal. That brings us to the end of this video. If you liked it and want me to make more of these, please tell your friends and classmates about Stomp on Step 1. I don't have the resources to do any sort of advertising, and I don't have the time to really dive into anything like social media marketing, so the only way people are going to find out about these videos is by you, the viewers, so please do pass that on. Thanks, and good luck with the rest of your studying.